Hello chess friends and welcome to the of Chess Channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're continuing with our Queen's Gambit Decline series and the so-called semi Tarash defense. The semi Tarash defense we have explained so far in five videos. First we had this introduction video then also some uh, other four videos in which we have explained the most important strategical ideas and tactical ideas of this very nice opening. So today we're analyzing a different line i'm sorry if i'm complicating things too much in this series but if you want to really study one particular opening you should be really familiar with many many sidelines then uh sometimes the main issue because many times you face this line that i'll introduce to you today because this will be really one of the most dynamic ideas in the same Italian defense the game will become really really wild from an early state of the game so uh let's check out now again what is the queen's game declined what is the same Italian defense and what is now our new line that we have to know if you want to of course play this opening so here uh, d4 we have uh, of course as our first move knight to f6 c4 e6 knight to f3 so far the counter nimzo or the anti nimzo indian setup uh here after move knight to f3 we have now the move d5 and after knight to c3 we have now the three knights variation and now comes the same italish move which is the move c5 and okay uh what we can notice is of course this dynamic play in the center of the board we have mentioned also in, the, in our our introduction video and in our uh, other videos that the simplification and clarification idea is one of the most important strategical ideas here of blacks blacks want to really have this clear fight center black wants to have an open center black wants to trade off more pieces because when more pieces are traded off then of course uh, black can reach an equal equal middle game and of course uh, can maybe even win the game so that's why c5 is of course a dynamic move but it breaks a a little bit we have to really state the basic principles in chess uh, the basic principle of chess uh, one of the main principles in chess is saying that you should first secure your king uh, by casting and then you should strike in the center by some pawn movement so that's why with the move c5 we're already opening the center uh, but with your king in the center so that's why uh, in this particular video we'll explain now the problems about this king in the center because white will try now to attack the king in the center that's not now one of the most aggressive methods here by white one of the most dynamic uh, ideas in this semi tarash defense so here after move c takes d5 uh, c5 we have again this move uh, c takes d5 and we have talked about this idea c takes d4 in our previous video with some different opportunities so if you want to have a better understanding of this particular lines please also check out my previous video of this opening so c takes d4 leads now into a complicated game my recommendation is not to take with the knight because there is also one principle in chess which says we have already played with the knight so we don't want to play with the same piece twice in the opening so we have to play now queen to d4 and okay maybe you'll be a fan of knight to d4 but now queen to d4 leads into really really tactical battle in an early stage of the game and that's what i like about this opening because obviously uh, after e takes d5 okay we can say about this position that mission accomplished white gained here an isolated pawn for black and an isolated pawn can be of course a long-term weakness but don't uh, don't be so scared of playing this position with the black pieces because uh here this isolated pawn it's not such a huge weakness because in the co in continuation of uh, the game we can expect immediately the move a knight to c6 and when that happens of course then d4 could be a very very annoying move because if we manage to push the pawn uh, the main goal when you're playing with the knight elite pawn is to proceed with the pawn is to push the pawn further so with the move knight to c6 and d4 black could have a really comfortable game by occupying here maybe the fourth rank so that's why white needs to be careful so that's why white searches now also for a clarification in an early stage of the game by pushing the pawn so white plays many times this move e4 e4 is now really one of the wildest opening lines in the same Itarash defense after move e4 uh here you witness now many times the move knight to c6 and okay in my opinion knight to c6 it's not uh, the best of moves there are different ideas in my opinion d takes e4 slightly better but okay we're analyzing now the move knight to c6 knight to c6 uh here i'll explain you in a great gameplay by uh, alexander grishuk against vesley so so really uh, two respected grandmasters here you don't want to get your queen back you don't want to retreat with the queen so that's why here Grishchuk played now the move bishop to b5 we have now 
d takes e4, we have queen takes d8, king takes d8, and now knight to g5. Uh, knight to g5 is, of course, creating this fork idea on, f's, uh, on f7, uh, the fork against the king uh, and the rook. So now the rook could be taken. So that's why many times we witness this line, bishop to e6, and now after knight takes e6, f takes e6, bishop takes e6, and b takes e6, we have reached now a very, very common line uh, in the same Italian defense in which black is up a pawn but uh, black has of course many pawn islands we can notice that uh, black has here one two three four and five pawn islands on the other hand black uh, pardon me white has only two so when we watch the pawn structure of course white's pawn structure is much healthier but uh, of course black is up a pawn so what white should not allow here is these three pawns somehow to get connected white should not play allow here some knight to d5 moves and then of course trading off pawns uh, trading off knights because if you do that if you play knight to d5 then of course black will probably connect these three pawns and will have simply a pawn majority in the center of the board so uh, what white needs to do now in these types of structures is of course first of all attack weak pawns but attack also weak squares we can notice now there are, that there are also many weak squares in the position first of all e5 and c5 d6 is also weakness so there are many many targets that uh black uh, pardon me white can attack in the continuation of the game but as i said what you should not do is uh, somehow allow your opponent to connect these three pawns in the center of the board so here king to e2 played by grishuk we have a bishop to uh, b4 what uh, here vasily saw is also trying to do is of course play simply bishop takes c3 uh, then b takes c3 and suddenly uh, white has also some weaknesses white would have this disconnected pawns white would, uh, could have also uh, have here many many pawn islands so that's why knight to a4 uh, grishuk escapes from this idea we have a king to e7 we have of rook to d1 and now comes one of the critical moments of this opening i think it's something that you should really know by heart because there is now a huge huge inaccuracy that you can make or you can play this uh, game properly i think here that uh, this move that grishuk played was the accurate move rook takes d8 although you're allowing your opponent here to play rook takes d8 but at least your bishop comes out with a tempo you're attacking at least this pawn there is also maybe here the opportunity uh, to play bishop to e3 immediately but you're allowing i think your opponent this move uh, and i'll explain you also uh, one game in this particular line after move rook to d5 finally i think uh, why uh, black is here the central grip with connecting uh, here the rook with this pawn so again you don't want to take of course rook takes d5 because because c takes d5 or e takes d5 again simply connects the pawn so that's why i like here really uh, this grishuk method uh, rook takes d8 rook takes d8 of course okay white gained now um pardon me black has now a dominant position on the default but now with bishop to e3 again vastly so had to retreat and now uh it's again time here to simply occupy the c file or the default so here uh, grishuk decided to play rook to c1 and here grishuk has already i think a comfortable game so here the continuation king to d7 was played rook to c4 attacking the bishop but also attacking this weak pawn on e4 we have bishop to d6 b3 bishop takes a2 h2 is not a possibility you get simply something like this uh this pawn uh, this bishop will be simply locked like in the famous um, uh game in which uh, bobby fisher also lost the game in his world championship match against Spassky when he took the pawn and uh, then the, uh, the bishop got locked so here with the move b3 everything is pretty much fixed uh, here in the continuation of the game we have a knight to d5 by uh, by vessel so and finally grishuk took here so here rook to e4 and in this particular game grishuk won the game so the whole game will be in the description below here i'll stop i don't want to analyze now really every move that's not the point of the series i just wanted to point out how you can get several position and i really want you to know what's going on on the board because here uh it's one game played by uh, Yilmaz against Kovalev in which uh, here you see how black uh, how Kovalev occupied the d5 square in the same uh, we have reached the same position like in this Grishuk soul game uh, bishop takes c6 b takes c6 again king to e2 so so far this 
similar move order and now we have again knight to, uh, knight to a4 uh, we have rook to d8 and here bishop to e3 now uh, kovalev played here rook to d5 so the rooks were not traded off and suddenly black has some kind of a space advantage here so here in the continuation we have rook to uh, c1 but now with knight to uh, knight to uh, g4 you see the bishop is hanging also this pawn is hanging although the c6 is also hanging but here kovalev doesn't want to of course simply protect one pawn he doesn't want to lose time just in order to protect one pawn here in the continuation we have uh, bishop to c5 we have bishop take c5 knight to c5 and now knight to f6 knight to, uh, rook to d2 rook to f8 was played and now rook to c4 also attacking this weakness but again knight to g4 because uh, here it's obviously also weakness the weak pawn on f2 and now after knight to e4 here a great tactic by uh, kovalev knight takes f2 he found really a great tactical shot because after rook take uh, rook to c2 you can of course take rook takes d5 but uh, it's a huge huge problem because you get e takes d5 you have to uh, step back with your with your rook and then of course the knight is hanging so great great tactics here after move rook to c2 we have a rook to uh, e5 now also the knight is uh, pinned a little bit we have king to e3 knight to g4 we have king to d3 and now a rook to d8 king to e2 and now c5 finally uh, black managed to connect uh, all of his pieces uh, although of course this is still a dynamic position but still of course we have to know this black is up a whole pawn so here king to f3 we have knight to h2 king to f4 everything was pretty much calculated here by kovalev rook to f5 king to e3 knight to g4 so we have king to e2 here king to rook to e5 again i don't want to really analyze the whole game this was simply a winning game here for uh for 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 black so as i said there are simply weaknesses but uh, here you see because of the rook activity black got some counterplay of course there are also some different opportunities for black to continue but uh, we have seen in this christian game taking out the rook slowing down the pace of the game maybe releasing a little bit the pressure because when the, there are still many pieces on the board of course black has some chances to create a position like this when you trade off more pieces like grishuk did trade it off the rook ex uh, simply attacked the weakness on uh, a7 then regrouped a little bit attacked simply again the weak spot points in the positional so i think um, Grace, you can have a comfortable game. So let's check out now again new opportunities in this position with the move queen to d4. We're analyzing now after e takes d5 this move after e4 and now d takes e4 without playing the move knight to c6 because we have seen now the problems I think of knight to c6 after bishop to b5 again this knight gets pinned and it becomes many times simply a weakness in the continuation of the game because after the tra uh, trades of queens and something like bishop takes c6 b takes c6 black has simply a new weakness in the position which is now a weak pawn so that's why here black delays now the move with the knight wants to have a clarification wants to have a simplification by simply trading off more pieces but without uh getting this knight challenge on c6 so here after move d takes e4 we have queen to d8 is the main line king takes d8 and now knight to g5 again threatening the fork again we have this bishop to uh, e6 idea but i'm pointing out again we have not played with the knight in which probably black will again get some uh, double pawns on the e file but at least we don't have this isolated pawn on, on the c file after potential bishop takes c6 so that's why i like more uh this line for black uh here in the continuation of the game you of course so white will probably play knight takes e6 f takes e6 and now after move bishop to g5 we have we can play king to e8 and now simply queen side calcing so i think this is a position that you want to reach uh when you're playing as black the evaluation is about equal but so far as i said you have not exposed yourself uh in the continuation of the game probably something like bishop to f6 uh let's see possible here knight to c6 maybe here bishop takes f6 then of course g takes f6 and maybe something like knight to e4 will happen but now with bishop to e7 everything is pretty much good together although uh, as i said there are maybe clear targets here for white but uh, this should be probably a drawish position especially because of the fact that we have here now uh, opposite colored bishops so maybe when the knights are traded off maybe when some rooks are traded off this should lead into an end game uh, end game stage so uh here uh after potential knight to c6 uh, i've prepared here one great game the uh, bishop to c4 was played in a game played by uh Karolin against boris grachev boris grachev played here with the black pieces and uh here after move 
move knight to e5 here bishop to b5 we have king to f7 bishop takes f6 now we have this one g takes f6 and knight to e4 as i said we have reached a similar position in which this game should probably end in a draw the engine gives here as i said equal chances for both sides so this is now something i think that you should study um, you may be the judge of this because in my opinion uh, you should delay this move knight to c6 because you will probably get pinned this is now the continuation queen takes d8 you get this one knight to g5 you have to protect with the bishop takes takes and now uh, bishop takes c6 uh, here b takes c6 leads now into complicated thing uh game i think for black there's simply too many pawn islands and i think white will always find great ways to attack uh, to attack uh, simply this uh, this weaknesses in the position so as i said this is something as it's also worth the study it the game becomes dynamic in the beginning but don't be scared i think if you know what you're doing you can reach this position you can reach also uh this position so it's something i think uh, that should not bother you so much because um the game after this dynamic play will uh slow down the will we will get slowed down a little bit because now we have i think equal chances here for both sides and um, as i said you should not be so uh, so worried about white's white's aggressive methods in an early stage of the game so okay i hope that you realize these ideas and i hope that you enjoy the video if you want to study the same itarash more please check out my whole series from the beginning uh, so introduction video part one part two and so on and if you want to study some other uh, lines of um, the queen's game the client check out my also um harvest attack but also check out our uh, chigor in defense in which we have explained some different uh defenses against d4 and if you have trouble maybe to play as black check out my hyper accelerated rank sicilian defense series and my nimza in defense series as good responses to e4 and d4 and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course